In this tutorial, I will show you how to transform your footage into an awesome and lively video using Photoshop and After Effects. I will also give you some cool tips and tricks on how to make the most out of Photoshop's generative feel, which sound effects to use and much more. Make sure to choose a suitable location before filming. In my case, I picked a place with minimal background motion and left some extra space in the foreground for generating the rails. It's important to use a tripod for this type of videos and go for a front facing wide shot for better results. Try to use a fixed light source to maintain a consistent look throughout the video. Once you have your footage, you can jump into post production. In Adobe After Effects, simply right click here, go to import file and select your footage, then drag and drop the clip onto this icon here to create a new composition that automatically matches your video settings. To keep things organized, let's go to composition, open composition settings and give it a descriptive name. If needed, you can edit your clip by moving the time indicator to where you want your video to start. For me, it's right before I walk into frame, press B to mark the beginning. Next, choose where you want your video to end and press N. Finally, right click here and click on trim comp to work area. At this point, I think my camera angle is a bit too zoomed in and I want to generate wider environments in Photoshop later. So with the video layer selected, press the S key to change the scale and bring it down to 70%. I also want to correct the colors a bit in the effects tab, find Lumetri color and double click to add it to your layer. You don't have to do this if your video already looks good. The subject is a bit dark, so I'm trying to fix that by tweaking the shadows, highlights and contrast. It also needs a bit more color, so let's increase the vibrance. All right, next up, let's turn on the rulers. As you can see, the area around the bench stays the same in the final video. That's intentional because it's the only section where there is a subject moving. So I want to avoid generating any new objects there. To mark that area, I will just drag a guide below the suitcase and make sure to leave some extra space if there are any shadows. Now let's go back to the very beginning before I come into frame. This will be the perfect frame to use as a clean plate. Set the preview resolution to full, go to composition, export frame as, Photoshop layers, choose a location to save it. I will name this clean plate and hit save. Find the exported file on your computer and open it with the latest version of Photoshop. I'm using the beta version here. Before we dive into that, if you're new to software such as Photoshop or After Effects and want to learn the basics or level up your skills, you gotta check out today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of classes created by industry leaders. You can dive into a wide range of topics like graphic and motion design, content creation, and many more. Personally, when I joined Skillshare, my goal was to keep up with the fast-paced world of content creation. For motion design, I recommend the beginner's guide to After Effects class by Jake Bartlett. It covers everything you need to know to start creating animations in Adobe After Effects. From navigating the software to keyframe animation and masking, you will learn all the essential techniques. And for new creators, there's DIY video production for content creators by Enrico Luzzi. This class is perfect for beginners who want to learn how to script, shoot, and edit videos all by themselves. It covers everything you to know to be successful in a small homemade production. Remember, whether you're looking to pick up a new skill or start your own business, Skillshare classes are designed by the best in the industry to take you from a beginner to an expert. And guess what? If you're one of the first 500 people to sign up through the link below, you will get free access to the entire class library for a whole month. And now let's get back to the video. And first things first, go to the view menu, show and enable the guides. And as you can see, the guide we created in After Effects is also visible here. I'm gonna use that as my limit and with the rectangular tool, draw a rectangle covering the entire ground below the guide. In Photoshop, you will see the generative fill bar floating around in your workspace. If you haven't used this before, it's really simple. Just click on generative fill and type in a description of the object that you want to generate. So for example, here I want to start by adding some train tracks. I'm just going to type train station rails and hit generate. 
Once processed, Photoshop will give you three options to choose from. You can settle with one of those results, which often works like magic. But if you don't like any, you can try generating again. The possibilities here are pretty much infinite and I usually give it a few tries before choosing from the generated layers. I think I like this one the best, but the rails don't look so convincing. Keep in mind that you can always use generative fill to modify specific areas on top of what's been generated. Okay, I think this makes the rails look much better, but I wanna get rid of these white blocks. So let's draw another rectangle here. And instead of typing anything this time, let's leave the text box empty and hit generate. As you can see, generative fill doesn't always require a text prompt and you can use this method to erase objects and leave more creativity to Photoshop. Now we can hide the guides. Since the lighting conditions were not perfect when we shot this video, let's draw a rectangle around the top here and generate a clear sky. All right, now I'm going to show you how to expand the environment. Draw a rectangle inside the image. I'm keeping it wider than the bench and make sure to leave a little margin outside the box. To make sure the new content blends well with the existing image, you can go to select, modify, feather, and increase the radius. I usually pick somewhere between 10 and 20, but feel free to experiment with different values. Now, the difference this time is that we wanna generate content outside of the mask, so we need to invert the selection. You can do that by pressing this shortcut or by opening the select menu and clicking on inverse. Since the video transitions between different train stations around the world, the key prompt for the environment is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to type in the city name, let's go with London in this example, and follow it with train station. Now the generated content may not be 100% accurate, but it provides a very good starting point. As usual, you can give it a few tries before settling on something you like. Also, feel free to clean the environment further by removing elements that you don't want to see. For example, I'm going to draw a rectangle around this thing here, leave the prompt box blank, and hit generate. And just like that, the distracting object is gone. I'm also going to do the same with the lamp here. Perfect. Clearly, this doesn't look like London yet. So let's draw a rectangle around this area. And I'm going to type in London City, comma, Big Ben. Several hours later. This may not be exactly true to life, but the architecture gives it a London-like vibe. Now let's get creative and add more objects that belong to the environment. For example, we can generate a red bus over here. On the right hand side, let's generate a light post and make sure to keep the rectangle to the size of the object that you want to generate. On the left side, let's add a phone booth. Now this definitely makes it look more like London. I don't like the small space left behind the booth. So let's use generative fill to fix that. Perfect. Lastly, I will add a trash bin right beside the lamp. Remember when using generative fill, you don't need to add any verbs before the prompt. Just type in a description of the object that you wanna generate and keep it simple. I'm happy with this so far. And once you're done generating, go to file, save as, choose a descriptive name for your Photoshop file and hit save. You can repeat the same process to generate as many environments as you want. And once you have a few, it's time to go back to After Effects and start animating. All right, let's start by importing this environment of KL City that I previously generated. When this window pops up, make sure to import it as a composition and retain the layer sizes. Now bring the generated image into the main composition. And since we created a static visual based on our clean plate, you can see that I still need to bring myself back into the scene. To do that, I will duplicate the original video, rename the copy as subject and move it to the top. So now I need to isolate myself from the environment. So I will double click on the subject layer to open it. With the Roto Brush tool selected, I will simply paint inside the subject that I wanna mask. Roto Brush in After Effects is really good as it automatically detects the edges, but sometimes it may miss out on some parts. So I will assist with the selection. You can hold the Control or Command key and drag up or down in the layer panel to adjust the brush size. 
I will scale it down and continue selecting smaller areas of my subject. If it happens that you end up selecting parts of the background, press and hold on the Alt key and paint over that area to remove it. I recommend you spend some extra time here to make sure the subject is properly outlined. And when you press the spacebar, the magic happens. The outline of the subject is tracked and you can stop and make changes to the selection if needed. For even better results, use the Refine Edge tool to draw a line around the edges which will improve the detection. Once you're satisfied with the selection, simply click on Freeze to apply the mask. This will take a few minutes, so if you enjoy my Photoshop and After Effects tutorials, make sure you give this video a like. It's a great way to show your support and encourage me to create more content like this. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on future videos. After processing, go back to the Composition panel and to double check the selection, switch the subject to solo mode to hide the other layers. It's looking pretty good and you can play around with the roto brush settings under the effects control panel to fine tune the edges even more. Disable the solo mode and one thing that's clearly missing here is the shadows. So let's bring that back. First, duplicate the subject layer, select the bottom one, delete the roto brush effect and choose the rectangle tool because the bench area is supposed to remain untouched throughout the video, we can safely draw a mask around it, open the mask properties, and increase the feather to blend the mask area with the background. Now, because I reduced the size of my original footage in the beginning, I ended up having myself cropped when I walk into frame. One way to fix that is to start with a tighter camera angle and zoom out after I walk in to reveal the whole scene. To do that, you can either create a new camera, or control the scale of all layers at once, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Go to Layer, New, Null Object, and let's rename this to Camera. Select all the other layers and set the camera layer as their parent. Then select the Null Object, press the S key, toggle the stopwatch to create a new keyframe. Increase the size until the original layer fills up the frame. Move a few frames forward and decrease the size back to 100%. Now we have a nice reveal, but to make the motion less linear, right click on both keyframes, click on Easy Ease and switch to the graph editor. And here you can adjust the speed handles to smoothen the motion even further. Let's preview. And as you can see, it's looking much smoother. Now let's bring in another generated environment. Go to the project panel, right click, import, and select the PSD file. Choose where you want the new environment to start and place the composition there. Open the generated composition. Here you can see that the Photoshop layers have been imported individually. You can use the solo toggle to determine which layers to reveal next. For example, it makes sense to start the scene with all of these layers enabled. Let's move two frames forward, enable the city layer and drag the in point towards the time indicator. Move two more frames forward and do the same thing with the red bus. Continue this process with the remaining layers until you have a timed animation. Now let's go back to the main composition and have a look. That's great. So now that you have the hang of it, and as you can see in my original project, you can apply these steps to as many environments as you want and time the layers to show up one by one. To make things more lively and realistic, I highly recommend adding more moving elements to your scene. Personally, I got a bunch of stock footage from Envato Elements to add an extra touch. For example, here I added real water surface to make the scene more realistic. I also gave the boat a subtle movement by adding a wiggle expression to its rotation. In this composition, I grouped together a bunch of transparent stock videos with moving plants. Another cool idea I had for this scene was to have a taxi drive by. I simply animated a photo of a taxi to move from left to right. And when you do this, don't forget to enable motion blur on the layer and the composition to make the movement look more realistic. I've also added more movements to the camera, like a bit of shake when the train passes by and a couple more zooms in and out at different times in the video. 
If you want to apply camera shake, you can use the wiggler tab that is accessible from the window menu. And if you want to access the final project and explore more techniques that I used in this video, I've made both the Photoshop and After Effects projects available on my Patreon page. So if you're a subscriber, feel free to grab it. Another crucial step that can make or break a video like this is sound design. I usually handle this step in Premiere Pro. Simply import the After Effects project, select the main composition and drop it into a new sequence. Let me go back to the original file and show you some of the cool sound effects that I used. Let me switch to the vertical workspace real quick. For camera movements like the ones in this video, I use the sound effect called Fireball Whoosh. You can find different variations of this sound on websites like Epidemic Sound. If you're wondering about the sound you hear when the objects are revealed, it's just an audio recording of a sewing machine. To add the final touch to the video, I did some color grading. The adjustments you make will depend on the desired look and feel. Typically, I adjust contrast, highlights and shadows, increase sharpness a bit, add some vibrance and slightly lift the blue levels in the shadows. To export the video for social media use, press on both Ctrl and M on your keyboard. Make sure you set the preset to match source and use adaptive high bitrate. It's best to change the resolution to 1080p to avoid additional compression after uploading, which can ruin the quality of your video. Enable max depth and maximum render quality. For 1080p videos, I usually set the target bitrate to 25. You can either click on export to render directly in Premiere Pro or send the video to Adobe Media Encoder. You can click here to change the output destination and finally hit render. If you have any questions about the process, tools or assets that I use in this project, let me know in the comments below. I'm looking forward to see what you guys create after watching this tutorial. So make sure you tag me on your videos, stay creative and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Bring a bucket, bang, bang.